coming up later, a secret tax on gold coins was discovered in Obamacare. Huh? Is there a connection between gold and your health? I doubt it. Keep it with the Cutler Report. We'll explain. Put some meat on the bones. Right. Every time one of these gold bullion dealers makes a trade, a gold bullion dealer, and everyone's buying gold coins, if it's above $600, they're going to have to file a 1099 IRS form. Some of these guys may have to file 10,000 forms in a year. That's exactly right, Larry. And as you know, you've talked about this in past shows. This, this uh, $600 uh, you know, um, expense item hits all small businesses, um, and it's going to be a huge increase in their reporting requirements to the IRS. What we didn't know until uh, the last uh, 24 hours was that this also applies to uh, the sellers of gold. They are now, as you just said, going to, in some cases, have to uh, fill out tens of thousands of these forms whenever uh, someone buys gold. There's another side to the story, though, Larry, that I think is even more important, which is how about the people like, you know, you and me and the people watching the show who buy gold. Right. As you know, I sold my stocks. I bought a lot of gold. Now, if you purchase more than $600 worth of uh, gold, that's also going to have to be reported to the IRS. I'm not too happy about that from a privacy standpoint, about the government knowing how much gold I own. All right, good point. What, just explain to me what this has to do with health care. <laughs> well, nothing, Larry, nothing at all. I mean, the, the kind of tangential relationship between the health care bill is, as you know, they were scrambling to find ways to raise revenues. The federal government thinks because of this new onerous requirement on small businesses, they're going to catch tax cheats, and they're going to raise $2 billion over the next five or ten years uh, through this uh, new reporting requirement. So this is I going think to affect that's crazy. I think business. the idea of hiring all Wait. those new, new IRS agents to uh, plunge into people's records is really a terrible thing. Okay, so that's the thing that worries me. Um, we are, this is not just about gold. This is about small business. That's right. Is this not a paperwork regulatory attack? on small business. Oh, my God, it certainly is. In fact, Larry, I'd make the case this is one of the biggest new reporting requirements to the IRS that we've seen on small businesses in 20 years. It is going to make it extremely onerous for the baker or for the, you know, the barber or any small business, that, and especially ones that actually make you know, major purchases. And by the way, a $650 purchase of a Xerox machine is hardly a major purchase, but you'd have to report that to the IRS because somehow they think all these small businesses are cheating on how much they owe the IRS. So so let's talk about these mammoth regulatory. I don't know how many pages Obamacare. How many pages was Obamacare? What do we have any? That was 2,800 pages. All right, 2,800 pages. The financial regulation, so called, 20, is 2,300. Right. Now, also in Obamacare, according to reports, minerals and mineral and metal makers, commodity producers, cannot do business with the Congo. Now, the Congo has a crazy government, I take it, and some people accuse them of genocide. I don't know enough about it. But the point is, they are barring commodity producers from dealing with the Congo, which is minerals and metals rich. Now, what is that doing in the health care bill? That was in Obamacare. <laughs> that is a foreign policy point in Obamacare. And am I going to discover all kinds of things in the, in the bank regulation bill that's there, just like this? There was a wonderful quote by President Obama when he signed the bill, when he said, isn't it terrible when people buy... Uh, sign a mortgage or sign a credit card agreement, and they sign these complicated things, and they don't know what they're signing. And I thought, does Obama understand the irony of what he just said? He's signing this 2,300-page bill, and I'm sure even President Obama doesn't know the fine print in that bill. And of course, the same thing happened when he uh, when he signed the 2,800-page uh, health care bill. So I thought there was rich irony in that statement of nobody should ever have to sign something that they don't know what's in it. Well, well the president just did. The, yes, indeed, the law of <laughs> unintended. Yes. Consequences is just running rampant in Washington because people don't read these bills. I mean, and I think also, we, they Larry, don't read these bills. Stevie, I got to get out. They, okay, nice to see you. Get. You're terrific. Thank you very much for explaining <laughs> this gold clause in the Obamacare health bill. Here's what you can expect. If you've ever applied for a credit card, a student loan, or a mortgage, you know the feeling of signing your name to pages of barely understandable fine print. What often happens as a result is that many Americans are caught by hidden fees and penalties or saddled with loans they can't afford. That's what happened to Robin Fox, hit with a massive rate increase on her credit card balance, even though she paid her bills on time. That's what happened to Andrew Giordano, who discovered hundreds of dollars in overdraft fees on his bank statement. Fees he had no idea he might face.